Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Nostril Limited Q3 FY24 and 9 months FY24 conference call. This call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anand, the Managing Director. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Anand. Thank you. Good morning and a very warm welcome to everyone present on the call. Along with me, I have Mr. P. Srinivasan, our Chief Financial Officer, and SGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. Hope you all have received our investor presentation by now. For those who have not, you can view them on the stock exchanges and the company website. To start, let me give you an overview of the company's performance in quarter three financial year 24. During this period, Revenue from operations amounted to rupees 341 crores, showing a slight decline compared to the previous quarter. Similarly, volumes experienced a marginal decrease in quarter three financial year 24 compared to the preceding quarter while maintaining the selling prices. This drop can be attributed to the ongoing global recessionary trends and the consistent influx from Chinese competition. The surge in supply from China largely owing to the subdued demand in international markets including China itself, is exerting pressure on volume and price dynamics both in the domestic and international markets. Despite the challenging environment, it is worthwhile to note that our continuous efforts to bolster our export business has started yielding positive traction. We have clocked a year-on-year -year volume growth of 14% on a nine-month FI24 basis in exports despite the current circumstances. It is important to highlight that though the latex part of our imports business has remained flat to the prevailing market conditions in Malaysia, our non-latex products business has developed on a positive trajectory. Just to reiterate that even the volumes year on year for nine months financial 24 in the domestic market is flat. Domestic market volumes continue to face the brunt of aggressive dumping from China. Nevertheless, our supply reliability and deep engagement with our domestic customers continue to hold us in good stead. Given the going, ongoing uncertainties, we maintain a balanced approach by strategically managing both price and volume. Now quickly on the industry scenario, the tire industry in, in India is well positioned on account of the steady growth of the automotive sector. India is holding on to its spot as the world's third largest automotive market and is expected to reach 4.1 million passenger vehicle sales by financial year 24, remaining one of the fastest growing markets globally. On the tyre exports front, following a slowdown in tyre exports, tyre exports have been making a slow recovery, barring a few hiccups with the Red Sea challenges. This situation has partially impacted both tyre exports and imports of raw materials. The domestic demand growth for tyre and tonnage terms is estimated to grow at about 3 to 6 percent CAGR from financial year 24 to 26, a combination of both replacement and OE sales. The tyre industry aspires to double its revenues by 2030 driven by rising demand for SUVs, infrastructure development projects, and stricter safety regulations. The non-tire sector also holds good promise with strong growth plans of the auto component and allied sectors. In summary, while there may be short-term challenges, the long-term outlook for rubber chemicals is promising with good growth expected from our end use sectors. We as NOSIL continue to focus on our key customers with a wide range of products, sustainability initiatives and supply reliability. This positions us well to capitalize on these opportunities for growth. That is it from my side for now. I will hand over to Mr. P. Srinivasan to give you updates on the financial performance. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Arun, and good morning to everyone. Now let me run through you the consolidated financial highlights. Volumes on the sales volume front, volumes of Q3 FI24 is 123, taking the base of Q1 FI20 as 100. Coming to the revenue parameters, net revenue from operations for Q3 FI24 stood at 341 crores, as against 351 crores in Q2 FI24, a degrowth of 3%. 
Selling price has been remained largely stable on a QOQ basis. Volumes for Q3 FY24 has degrown 3% on a QOQ basis. Net revenue from operations for 9 months FY24 stood at 1,088 crores as against 1,224 crores recorded in 9 months FY23. Coming to the operating EBITDA performance, operating EBITDA for Q3 FY24 stood at 49 crores as against 45 crores in Q2 FY24. EBITDA margin for Q3 FY24 stood at 14% as compared to 13% in Q2 FY24. On the operating EBITDA for 9 months FY24 stood at 150 crores as against 205 crores in 9 months FY23. EBITDA margins for 9 months FY24 stood at 14% as compared to 17% in 9 months FY23. In relation to the PBT parameters, PBT for Q3 FY24 stood at 41 crores as compared to 37 crores in Q2 FY24. PBT for 9 months FY24 stood at 124 crores as compared to 164 crores in 9 months FY23. Profit after tax, the profit after tax for Q3 FY24 stood at 30 crores as compared to 27 crores in Q2 FY24. Profit after tax for 9 months FY24 stood at 91 crores as compared to 121 crores in 9 months FY23. With this, we would like to open the floor for question and answers. Sessions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the dash turn to telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen will wait for the moment while the question queue assembles. And the first question is from the line of need of Zimbodia from Anvil Shares and Broking Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. I have two questions. Uh, sir, first is on, uh, let's say, when we see the uh, global tire customers, I think there are some top 15 tire customers which controls close to 80% of the world tire production. And I presume that uh, we are probably registered with most of them. So just uh, want to have your thoughts like what is actually stopping them to source the additional volume of from us given the kind of uh, proactive discussions we have been initiating with them over last one year. And I presume that currently we may be supplying very little or smaller volumes to them in their overall volume requirement. So if you can just share your thoughts on that, that would be helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nirav. Uh, yeah, so you're right, uh, we, we are kind of present with uh, nearly all the top tire customers uh, outside of, of China, uh, not in China, but largely all the ones outside. We have one or the other product that's been going to them. That's on the, on the one hand. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I think, uh, as, you, as we uh, have also been mentioning at the earlier calls, that uh, we have been making progress, and I think there is, it's not a question of not wanting to, it's about the step-by-step -step approach in terms of getting approvals at each site. And it's also a certain comfort down the line in each of these organizations where they get comfortable with some of the products, the new products that we are, we are giving them. So that is ongoing. And, and you also see that the results in terms of the developing volumes that we just mentioned in terms of how the export numbers have been developing. So I think we are, we are on a pretty much good track as far as that is concerned. Yeah, because sir, earlier I think we were facing some capacity constraints when we had not expanded the capacities. But I think we have expanded in the right products also, which probably they would be requiring to source from us. So I just wanted to understand, like, uh, can those incremental volumes based on our discussions start accruing to us from Q4 or let's say Q1, where we will see some sort of incremental volumes from those customers and then probably the building up of volumes can happen from them. Yes. yes, so like I mentioned, they've already started uh, accruing and we will we, will, we expect that we should uh, start building up as we go along into the next quarters, for sure. Okay. And we have the right products, yeah. Okay, so sir, safe to assume that some uh, sizable incremental volumes could come to us in Q4 or that could be uh, postponed to Q1. Just, just your thoughts. So my thoughts that uh, there will be in, uh, a gradual build-up. Uh, I think yeah, we know that there are recessionary trends out there, but uh, we are quite positive that this build-up uh, will be uh, positive. Yeah. Okay. 
सर सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज ऑन द डोमेस्टिक रबर केमिकल मार्केट सो जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू अंडरस्टैंड लाइक वेदर इट इज एक्सपांडेड इन सी वाई ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉज एज सी वाई ट्वेंटी टू एंड इफ यस लाइक वॉट इज अवर इंक्रीमेंटल मार्केट शेड इन दोज इंक्रीमेंटल वॉल्यूम्स इन इंडिया एंड सम अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑन अवर ओवरऑल मार्केट शेयर इन सी वाई ट्वेंटी थ्री वॉज एज सी वाई ट्वेंटी टू yeah so uh, i'd say uh, while the, the, the number uh, as far as the domestic market is concerned we go a lot by primary and also secondary data that we uh, that we accrue i would say it is it's pretty much kind of flattish maybe 1 or 2% growth in actual kind of compounding volumes uh, sometimes we look at other numbers and we assume that it's growing faster but actually our barometer is is compounding values of of volumes of rubber and that kind of maybe flattish to 1 or 2% Uh, increase over and uh, i think we were kind of uh, pretty much more or less also flattish like we said in terms of uh, a market presence in the domestic market i expect it should start moving up because uh, the replacement cycle should start picking up as we go along uh, uh, in the next quarters okay. right so is it possible to quantify our market share in cy23 versus cy22 or exit of cy23 versus cy22 specifically uh, i would not be able to do that but but uh, we have clearly uh, a large a sizable market share in the domestic market here yeah. correct and uh, so last one is like if you can just elaborate uh, because in your opening remarks you mentioned that uh, the domestic tire market is expected to have a cagr of let's say close to 3 to 6% and given the kind of uh, we customers uh, doing lot of capex here for uh, for the export of tires to the outside world uh, is there any scope for expanding our market share here in india from where we are currently any fears yes. how how we can how we can go ahead with this strategy yeah so uh, just uh, alluding back uh, to your earlier question also i think uh, having a dominant market share we we kind of clearly see that uh, with the tire production bound to increase in the next years not only from oe but also from the replacement as well as the export opportunities out there we see a good opportunity to grow uh, definitely grow at market growth rates and a few percentage points above that uh, in an incremental manner that's that's clearly our outlook got it sir thank you so much and i'll join back in the queue sir thank you neeraj thank you the next question is from the line of aditya ketan from smith institutional equities please go ahead Yeah, good morning, sir, and uh, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my first question is, sir, when we look at our volumes on a nine monthly basis, so this is almost flattish. So this is like uh, what we had uh, uh, attributed to the higher competition. So how you see things to like moving forward in in 2025 and 26? So uh, will we will be sitting at uh, high single digit growth or uh, or low double digit growth can be expected uh, going ahead, considering the competition and all. so um uh, clearly uh, we see that uh, volumes will build up uh, from here on uh, uh, going forward uh, but i wouldn't be able to put a specific uh, finger to say where this number will be but uh, i'd expect with our approvals not to be getting accelerated in the export but also with the domestic market expected to grow volumes will develop positively okay so uh, Sir, in, in in this quarter, sir, there was a uh, decline into our raw material prices, especially on on especially the aniline prices. But currently, sir, uh, so from January 24, we are witnessing that the aniline prices have moved up by 15 percent. So, like, uh, uh, is there any risk to our near-term spreads? What we have reported in this quarter, can it like maintain, or there is a risk uh, that it can go down? Uh. Are there risks to demand share from Nosel? So basically, we will have to play the game, uh, a balanced game of judicial mix of volume and pricing, and uh, we are uh, constantly monitoring on a case-to-case, product-to-product, customer-to-customer basis. I think on on the uh, on the annual prices, it, it's a bit uh, dynamic also, uh, Aditya. So I think uh, as you rightly said. Uh, There was a bit of downswing, and then it again keeps going up and down. And we have covered something in the earlier thing. Yeah. And we generally get it covered, uh, yeah, uh, over a period. Uh,
maintain our long term spreads what what we have reported in in this quarter sorry we just we just lost you in in a bit sir can you just repeat it please so despite this and any price movement so can we maintain our long term spreads what we have reported in this quarter yes yeah, so uh, on that 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 is kind of again dependent on how the uh, the as we said uh, there is a volatile situation on the raw material uh, but we expect that at least to to keep similar value addition levels question so what is the value added segment currently because i believe so one or two quarters back you have stated that it has went down from 25% to 15% uh, so what levels are it currently I think this is referring to specialty part, is it? Yeah. Specialty business. Yeah. Yes. So I think this is more or less around 15 to 17 percent. 15 percent. And sir, uh, any trend like so we are witnessing, uh, so this will again move up uh, in 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 the near term, or it will remain constant at least for the next one or two years. Uh, so sorry, I'm uh, just kind of losing parts of your question. So I, uh, can you just repeat that again, please? So my question was, so, uh, so the value added segment, uh, so so this will remain at 15 percent, or there is a chance like it can move to around 25 percent uh, back to the normal levels. It will be operating in a similar level, but our aspiration to increase it will be there. So as and when the market opens up, we will definitely try to capitalize on those opportunities. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shailesh Raja from B N K Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So, uh, as per the exim data, uh, on an average, China imports 2,500 tons per month of rubber chemical products. So, which has come down below 2,000 tons in November month. Both October and November month uh, data was showing declining trend over previous months. Also, China also uh, under high tech uh, enterprise category. China, uh, since China was enjoying lower tax rate at 15% for last three years, from Jan 2021 to December 2023, and it got expired. So my question to you is, because of these two factors, do you see any signs of improvement in volume and realization for us in this running quarter? Shailesh. Sh- 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 uh... We would like to clarify two things. One is the import data which you are referring to may not be the accurate data because imports come in uh, in advance and uh, the demand is consumed. It's based on actual consumption, so there could be a stock holding period. So that is not a actual import data is not a true reflection of a demand. What's happening in the market? That's number one. Number two, I think rubber chemicals comes under different chapters. So importers use chapter 29 and chapter 38. So I don't know which chapter you have used to compile the data. Uh, so that's something which is yet to be validated. So if we can share those data, we will examine it and get back to you. And on the uh, the subsidy part, I, we we need we will come back to you. We need to check up. Uh, we are not heard anything in the marketplace to uh, state contrary to what uh, the subsidy they are withdrawn. I don't think so. We have seen any such uh, indications in the marketplace that. The subsidies have been withdrawn. Okay. But the question is, if it's a listed company, they would have definitely announced it in the public domain. Yeah, yeah. So it is that that I am sharing with you. Uh, sir, uh, how is the realization, sir? Now trend, it is improving compared to pre Q. I think realization we have held up, we have held, hold on to, held on to the same price levels of Q2, more or less similar range. <laughs> Okay, okay, sir. So my next question: uh, One of the key growth drivers of the company is exports volume going up, primarily in Southeast Asia, Japan, Europe, and US. These four regions. So in four Q, particularly the Europe replacement tire and uh, truck and bus segment, it degrew by 10% Q O Q, and Y O V also there was a degrowth of uh, 17%. So Europe is roughly contributing, say, 20 percentage of our overall exports. See, we have. Seen uh, growth in exports Q O Q. Could you please let us know what led to this outperformance in overall exports volume and which region we are seeing good traction? Yeah. So, um, 
so uh, so basically uh, uh, if you look at our international share it's still uh, moderately uh, on the lower side uh, and uh, we are kind of uh, as we have been mentioning in the last few calls uh, we are kind of getting in uh, with with the customers in terms of newer volumes with customers so i think so these are all also incremental and on the one hand with, with some of the customers we are there would they might show some impact of recessionary trends but the newer businesses that we have got in the last month and which will build up in the next month has kind of accrued uh, on that front yeah okay that's that's the reason okay okay good sir so say this quarter the export index number is say 100 and how do you see this 100 index number will play out for us in the coming quarters we will grow we will grow so yeah we don't want to put any specific number to that our aspiration to grow is there and the discussions are in that direction front Okay, okay. So my next question: Our power and fuel cost uh, quarterly average was 45 crores in FY23. What is the current run rate, and what are the initiatives we are taking to reduce the power and utility cost? It's going on a continual basis, and uh, our efforts to uh, reduce reduce the cost as compared to last year has been has yielded some positive results, and it's sustaining, and it it is uh, maintained. I would say it's on a sustainable nature, sustainable nature. because of the efficiencies and other operating parameters the team worked very hard on that to improve on that and i think it has started showing in the performance as part of also our overall efforts in terms of uh, operational efficiency i think uh, they are also reflecting uh, beyond just uh, reduction in in the uh, fuel cost there has been other efficiencies that have also played out so what was the number sir in 3q power and fuel cost uh This I think that's the one. Yeah, it's a broader number. Other expenditure is to see it's in that. Yeah. Okay, sir. Let me have a look at the balance. Sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. No, our cash balance must have crossed now three uh, fifty crores, uh, and the cash generation also is uh, expected to be very strong. So, what is our cash allocation plan for next two years? How much we are going to spend? Uh, For the new products and for the existing business, what is our maintenance capex? Let me talk about that. Uh, one is on the on the other expenditure. We have seen a nine months reduction of forty odd crores from two ninety eight to fifty seven. So the earlier question. That's the earlier question which you had asked. Yeah. So that's the ultimate which comprises of, as Anand said, it comprises of both utilities and other operating costs uh, in the manufacturing environment. coming to the capital allocation yes we are on the discussion or we are on the evaluation stage as and when we finalize something on capex we will uh, take it to the board and for appropriate uh, approvals and as and when those things come in we will definitely announce yes our aspiration to grow is definitely there and we were we are evaluating various plans for that okay sir thanks thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on the growth numbers that we are seeing on the volume front. So, the first question is on the inventory de-stocking. So, what is your assessment uh, when we are talking to our customers uh, from two perspectives? One, uh, the inventories for uh, rubber chemicals as such. And uh, two, uh, the inventories for uh, the tires or the from the tire manufacturer perspective, uh, their own set of inventories, uh, because both these factors may, I mean, certainly have had impact last year. But what is the current situation when we are talking to customers? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rohit. Uh, yeah, so I, the, while uh, the the destocking uh, has happened in the last few months, uh, there is still a trickle down effect that that continues. but on the other hand there is a, a more cautious approach given the uncertainty in terms of the various factors that keep coming up in the external environment so uh, there, there is a, a cautious approach in terms of uh, procurement so you could say sometimes delaying sometimes slowing it down so uh, these things are happening some plants tend to then operate at lower capacities uh, uh, so that that tends to play out so i, I wouldn't say it's, it's it's all across but it it tends to have that's the conversations we tend to have with our, with our customers yeah. to add to that some of our critical raw materials we are also making an effort to by shifting from imports to indigenous sources 
that has also reduced the overall inventory uh, procurement time. Or customer list of customer list. Sure, sure. That's helpful. Uh, so, second question you also alluded in terms of the ratio issue in terms of uh, you know, the logistic and the uh, freight cost. So, what is your assessment till now over the last couple of months since the freight costs have gone up uh, in terms of uh, both uh, availability of uh, containers or shipping? And the second, uh, whether there could be a transitory impact during Q4 because of the higher freight rates. Uh, which probably will be compensated uh, in Q1 when we will again go in for our uh, newer negotiations. So your perspective on the same. And just in terms of even from the raw material availability, I mean, uh, Sydney sir just told that uh, we have uh, gone in for some domestic resourcing as well. But uh, from the imported raw material, are there any constraints that we are facing to the right issue? Thank you. Yeah, so first on the on the on the customer side and the business, uh, we don't uh, see any major impact uh, on account of that. Yes, there is a marginal increase in in uh, freight costs. Uh, there has there has been an increase. We are discussing with customers on how this can be uh, addressed. Uh, we don't see a major impact, uh, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, we have had to recalibrate our shipping uh, timelines and things like this, uh, uh, but uh, not a major challenge at, at this point in time. Uh, on the other hand, as far as raw materials, we don't see any major disruptions on account of that. Yeah, so we, we did have to again plan for longer lead times, uh, but uh, not major disruptions. So, uh, just I'll squeeze in one last uh, clarification. So, we've been um, you know working on fewer products in terms of uh, application apart from the you know auto segment. So, if you could just uh, let us know what is the status for the same. And uh, obviously, at certain point in time, that may entail KPEX. So currently, where are we in terms of uh, any timelines uh, for freezing such kind of uh, initiative or next leg of uh, say KPEX? Thank you. So one for the, as uh, Shini had uh, mentioned, uh, the uh, uh, as far as CapEx for the rubber chemicals is concerned, we are, we are closely studying the situation. We're looking at where we need to do and as and when we have something approved at the board, we will share that uh, with you. So that's the constant uh, study that, that is on. Uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, with regard to other adjacencies, or I, I assume that was what was your question, we are, we are also working on that. And as in when we have something, we will come back very difficult to put a specific timeline to this, Rohit, because you will, you will understand that these things take time. I think they go up to a certain point, and, and still you're not sure whether these things happen. So, yeah, and that's where we are. Fair enough, sir. Uh, thanks for answering all the questions and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rohit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitish Dut from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for this uh, opportunity. Uh, so, uh, so my uh, first question is uh, basically, you know, from one of the previous participants' uh, question. Uh, you know, you indicated that. Uh, the imports from China and elsewhere would be in advance of, uh, you know, the actual consumption. And, uh, uh, you know, since the December quarter witnessed a decline in imports, so uh, does it indicate that Q4 would be looking weaker in terms of uh, domestic volumes uh, sequentially? Uh, any insight since uh, we are already in the middle of uh, the quarter? No, we we don't have any uh, we, we don't have any reason to be, believe that it will be weaker. So we don't see it from from that perspective. We see that Q4 uh, should be uh, better than Q3. Right. Uh, and my second question is again on on one of the previous questions. Uh, uh, you know, on the on the volumes. Uh, so not just last year, but last couple of years. Uh, you know, there is no uh, there, you know there is practically no volume growth, uh, so to say. So, have we lost market share uh, domestically, or has the market itself uh, remained uh, flattish or degrown? On a domestic thing, I think it's more or less flattish, and we have not lost any market share per se. Yeah. The market has also remained uh, flat, to me. more or less flat. I think what we have to look at is, uh, I think if you look at the investor presentation, uh, there were there is a slide which is, uh, which depicts about the IRSG or rubber consumption globally, and look at the consumption trending over the last six years. It's actually coming back to the last six years levels. So maybe we are talking about 2017 levels when we are speaking now. So from that perspective, we have grown 
in that sense, uh, the de uh, demand being flat across the globe. And largely it is in the Western market. Uh, India and China is a little different. Uh, right. So again, I mean, just continuing. So, so uh, what gives us the confidence, uh, you know, that the next couple of years would be different versus the previous couple of years, uh, you know, only as far as the domestic market uh, is this, uh, concerned. I mean, uh, your thoughts uh, there would be really helpful. Yeah. So, uh, as you know, I think in, in the in the domestic market, uh, there is always a cycle of the replacement tire segment, and I think we see that this cycle will also kick in with all the all the things going together in terms of. Uh, expansion in production of tire companies, uh, investment in infrastructure, uh, all these things will, will hold good even for commercial vehicles, replacements that happen. So we are quite positive the domestic market will grow and there are quite positive plans by our customers to grow on that front. Also on the export side, uh, we see that uh, uh, with uh, gaining uh, approvals and, and penetration that happens, volumes will tend to grow over the next quarter. Right. And any any uh, uh, you know any number that you can describe uh, you know what kind of a volume growth uh, you know you're targeting for the next uh, couple of years or in terms of capacity utilization any indications there? Uh, so Nitish, uh, yeah, that'd be difficult to put a finger on that, but we we are quite positive which it should be on the uh, ascendancy. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, so thank you, thank you, and uh, all the best. Thank you, thank you, Nitish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirav Zimbodia from Anvil Shares and Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity again. So, sir, you mentioned that uh, the latex market has uh, virtually remained flat for us, and I think from the peak, uh, from our earlier discussion on the con call, you mentioned that uh, our uh, latex volumes have come down significantly. So. Uh, anything if you can share like uh, how do you see those markets recovering or any chances of getting recovering in the short term which could again bring back those lost volumes to us? Yeah, so I think uh, on the latex, uh, at least what we are seeing is that it's kind of bottomed out and uh, we see some uh, recovery that's, that's happening, not necessarily significant volumes coming back, but at least uh, the view is that it's kind of bottomed out and uh, while there has been some market shifts happening in within the latex production itself uh, within Asia, uh, but uh, expect that it's kind of more or less uh, bottomed out here. Okay. So we could see some incremental volumes from there also starting FY25, if, if that could that, be. That's our expectation. Uh, yes. Got it. Uh, and the second question is on uh, the imports of uh, rubber chemicals to India. So. I think there are a few categories of products where probably we don't have those presence, like in terms of the total market size. Uh, if you can just uh, give us some understanding, like uh, out of the total rubber chemical market in India, uh, how much is how much is like we are able to serve on? So some of the products where we don't have the presence and that are getting imported to India, obviously uh, our market share gets diluted to that extent if we take the overall market size. So if you can just give us some understanding about uh, what what are the volumes coming to India where we don't have the presence and how much it forms of our total rubber chemical size of India. In in, in terms of uh, rubber chemicals, largely for the applications, there are there are maybe one or two three products which we see we might not have in our range, but that also we have in the, in the recent past we have done some indigenization to also start local production of those products. Uh, uh, but by and large, then there is the other specialty additive segment, which is which is not necessarily along the same value chain, a bit more different. Uh, that's another market uh, segment that I would say, and not put it along with the same market that we are defining and uh, defining for our strategically relevant market. So, not too many products which are outside of our strategically relevant market. Uh, you know, so when we say uh, our market share, we don't include those specialty additives uh, in that, right? Yes, we don't include those specialty additives. Got it, sir. Got it. And just a small clarification, like what, if I could understand it correctly, you mentioned that Q4 volumes should be trending higher than what we have done in Q3. Yes. Got it, sir. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Radha. 
from B N K Securities. Please go ahead. Hi sir, thanks for the opportunity. Um, so what we wanted to understand a bit on the domestic market. So we understand that we are the largest players in rubber chemicals, but other than that, uh, there are few small players like PMC Chemicals, etc. So who have uh, expanded capacities uh, in rubber chemicals. So how is that panning out for them? And uh, also wanted to understand what uh, whether Lancet has any uh, rubber chemical capacities in India or are they only trading from the US entity? So uh, Lancet. Lancet has the capacities in India. Uh, they uh, they make a couple of uh, products in the sectors we we segments we operate. Uh, apart from that, they make some additives also. Uh, uh, the other players have come up with some small capacities, but uh, uh, I think they are, uh, some of them overlap, some of them do not overlap. Uh, uh, also, kind of uh, uh, also at the same time, I think some of these products are critical from an intermediate point of view. Uh, and I think uh, from that, that also gives us an advantage in terms of being able to manufacture the intermediate also in house. Yeah. So, how much uh, capacity does Lancet have in India? I, I would not be able to put a number on that, uh, rather. Yeah. And sir, any, any, okay, any of these two players also having uh, backward integration? No, they do not have backward integration. And so, in, uh, given that we have uh, backward integration, so wanted to understand whether uh, we are selling any of the intermediate products in the market. No, we are not uh, doing that. We are using it largely for captive. Yeah. Okay. And so, globally, anyone um, recently announced any capacity expansion? Not in the last uh, quarter, I'd say, yeah. So that uh, first half actually that accelerator capacity is expected to come back and for sunshine, sunshine China. Uh, so other than that, uh, no and new no capacity other, expansion. Yeah. Yeah. But not, nothing that, uh, nothing that you know at all. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Anandu. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Herschel Parikh from Acuta's Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, I would just like to know our uh, volume mix uh, in terms of uh, domestic and exports. What's the updated mix now? Yeah. Um, it's with the our 70, 30, 68, 32 something. 68, 32. And sir, within exports, what would be the percentage for our latex part? About uh, the percentage? 20. Latex is about uh, probably 18 uh, or 16 percent, sorry. Okay. And, and sir, for the value part, can you do the mix? No, value part, we don't wish to share that. We would prefer to. Okay, sir. Understood. And sir, in the exports market, especially in the European markets where we have been seeing, you know, uh, cheap uh, Chinese tire imports, uh, which is impacting rubber chemical demand also for us. Uh, how is that scenario panning out? Is there any improvement there? So we we have not uh, seen any major impact uh, on account of of that uh, in in terms of our business in the, in the European market as yet. Yeah. Oh, understood. And sir, this new approvals which you mentioned in the call is it coming from the US market or the European markets? It's it's across. It's across. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Brooking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the follow-up. Uh, Shreemi, uh, for the first nine months, uh, what has been the export domestic uh, mix in terms of revenues? I think uh, it's about uh, exports will be about 34%. Sure, sure. And uh, in terms of uh, margins, uh, is there any uh, distinction between the exports margins and uh, domestic margins or more or less they are uh, in line? See, uh, I think for a product, a similar product, you will be having in exports uh, a lower margin because of the duty protection in India. Other than that, uh, it's the uh, same margin. The basket of export is different than the domestic. That's the other part. Right. And... Uh, in terms of exports, uh, incrementally, I mean, currently we are the key markets and incrementally, which we are uh, focusing on, uh, the reason for asking the question is that I understand in Thailand, 
uh, there have been a lot of new capacities uh, by the global uh, tire manufacturing companies are coming up so just wanted your view in terms of our target market and we are also trying to get into uh, this market as well thank you so global customers is always to work with them across geographies right so uh, so irrespective of so that means if there is an uh, investment in additional capacities we hopefully uh, feel the trickle down effect of that also yeah so it is across uh, rohit uh, Sure, that's helpful, sir. And uh, any key markets that we are working in terms of exports across all all the markets. So, so if you work with the global players, so we like we mentioned, we always had a traditionally good presence in Asia. We continue to expand in Asia as well as the other markets. Sure, sir. Uh, thanks, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Ketan from Smiths International Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the follow-up. Uh, sir, the question was, uh, sir, in our presentation on uh, on slide 23, we had given a comparison of nozzle sales as compared to the global rubber consumption. So that data in, in indicates that uh, that nozzle has uh, outperformed the rubber consumption by a wide margin. So, sir, uh, uh, so will this trend so continue over the next? Uh, oh, oh. More than ten to twelve years. How do you see the rubber consumption trend for the next ten years? So uh, rubber consumption trend uh, per se, the the projections normally turn out to be about globally around three percent, two and a half three percent. That's what the projections are, but they're not really played out to that extent uh, in the last couple of years, two three years, like what Shini was mentioning. Due to one reason or the other, one market or the other doesn't do well, and uh, it doesn't then globally play out to the same extent. But uh, I think with consumption and, and things remaining at a, at a certain uh, assumed level, we, we still see that uh, overall globally uh, the growth will continue to be at uh, at least two and a half three percent, and uh, the emerging markets will will obviously be at a higher rate. Yeah. Yeah. You're not audible properly, sir. Is it okay, ma'am? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. South performance as compared to the relative, so per uh, consumption ahead also, or uh, or there could be like some indexation can happen over there. So if I okay, we heard parts of your question. So I'm assuming uh, your question was how do we relate to this? Is my assumption that you asked? We expect to, to grow above market growth rates for sure. Yeah. I do not know if that was your question, Aditya, so because I couldn't hear you clearly. Yeah, Aditya, not audible. I just request you to connect again. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Proline, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity again. So, just want to understand. You mentioned that you know, in lot of global uh, uh, tire companies, uh, your uh, your uh, I mean, you are trying to get that approval, right? So maybe they have tried some of your products, and then uh, over the period of time, that gradual approval will come. So, from a point of view of let's say a switching cost for these tire companies to switch from a competitor to our product, and vis-a-vis uh, also to switch to a competitor from our product, how easy or difficult is it uh, to do that? And is there a part of the portfolio uh, which you want to quantify where uh, which is more specialized in nature, and hence that switching cost is very very difficult. So, if you can help me with some color uh, in the context of switching cost and how do we this progression of volumes takes place at some of these customers uh, where we have already started supplying some pilot quantities? Okay, so um, thanks, thanks, Pauline, uh, for that question. So maybe I start with the latter part first uh, uh, in in terms of uh, uh, maybe you need to kind of if I don't answer, just have to come back again. So, but typically what happens is uh, the approval process can take anywhere between six months to one year, and even even plus and beyond. Depend depends on how present you are with the with the customer. 
I think it's also uh, with the kind of support you give customers in terms of supply reliability, quality reliability, you always increase the, the switching cost, and that's what uh, we always endeavor to do for anybody else. And it, it does take time, so there is a switching cost of technical approvals, uh, not only at the laboratory but other applications. So, so it is a cost. Uh, uh, so, so and, and as, a, as a player, you tend to uh, hope that you can increase it with all the service and support that you give uh, customers. Uh, your, your latter question, I just missed that, the last part, uh, sorry. Uh, no, I just wanted to understand as to what percentage of portfolio would you quantify yeah, yeah. where switching cost is typically high. And just to add to that, right, I mean, is it fair that maybe uh, in FY24, we have been working on a lot of these projects, and FY25, we will see a lot of these approvals uh, finally fructifying and resulting in higher volume. Is that a fair comment to, uh, uh, I mean, summarize how things could be in FI25? Yes, that, 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 is, that is the outlook. Yeah. That, that is how we, we see it. And uh, I think on the speciality part, I think like we mentioned earlier, it's about 15-odd uh, uh, percentage uh, as far as our specialities are concerned. So there, again, the switching cost will be higher than the others uh, one can expect. Okay, and when you say 15%, is it your overall mix, or are we talking about only tire chemicals here? The overall, the overall mix. Mixed. Overall mix, okay. And uh, from a capacity point of view, right, from a gross block point of view, if I were to ask you to divide the capacity between specialty and the other part, uh, would it be 25-75? Uh, because I think, if I'm not wrong, in the past, you have had 25% of your sales coming from specialty. So from a capacity point of view, would it be uh, uh, two-thirds? I mean, how, 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 how would you divide capacity between speciality and non-speciality? Uh, uh, today, it will not be directly proportional to the business uh, proportion. Um, capacity per se, in case of specialized application, the capital investment is much relatively a little lower as compared to the overall conventional rubber chemicals. Okay, okay. And where are we on capacity utilization on both the fronts or maybe a, a, a consolidated number or a separate number would also help just to understand, uh, you know? Uh, around, and, around somewhere between operating between 62 to 65 percent. Oh, 62 to 65 percent and maybe 70 to 75 percent is when you will think of expanding. Is that a fair way to uh, think about things? Uh, I think that's a little premature question from your perspective. I think we will, uh, we said, now we are evaluating various plants and then when we uh, anything plan gets finalized, we will take it to the board and then we'll come back to you. So okay. I think. Okay. And one last question uh, from my end uh, would be on the export market. You mentioned that export mix is significantly different uh, or different uh, versus the domestic mix. Would you want to, uh, I mean, let's say, for example, in terms of realization, if let's say domestic is 100, how different would be realization in the export market? We announced just a few minutes back. See, in low domestic market, the market, the pricing are adjusted, international prices are adjusted for duties and exchange rate. So, okay. for example, if the uh, export market is fetching maybe 100 rupees, domestic on the same product will be 110. But the basket okay. of exports is slightly different vis-a-vis -vis the basket of domestic. Sure. So, taking that basket into consideration, uh, you know, uh, I am uh, assuming that realization would be higher. So, by how much? I mean, you know, it's like a 25% higher just based it's on the sensitive basket? Issue. It's a sensitive information. We don't wish to quantify that. All right. All right. No worries, sir. Thank you for answering my question and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, we will take Colin as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Anand for closing comments. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone and take this opportunity to thank you for joining the call. I hope uh, we've been able to address all your queries. For any further information, kindly get in touch with me or Strategic Growth Advisors or Investor Relation Advisors. Thank you once again and have a nice day. Thank you. On behalf of NOSA Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.